A, a significant uh, theory during week three that we are considering is object relations that um, we earlier discovered was from the work of I need to bring up the next slide it's Melanie Klein it's Melanie please forgive me I called her Marilyn I believe it is I'm not sure why I want to call her Marilyn but in the earlier um, week two uh, lecture I used the word Marilyn consistently her name is Melanie Klein not Marilyn and I apologize for the um, mispronunciation uh, certainly she was a, a giant in terms of psychoanalysis and, and a contemporary of Sigmund Freud but basically uh, uh, Dr. Klein was the um, person who developed the initial ideas for this movement in psychotherapy. Basically, she introduced the concept of the internal object and discussed fantasies that uh, she thought were destructive and guilt-inducing and since they were uh, intolerable to infants, they were projected outward onto caregivers. Um, and uh, so these are key elements of her initial theory as we looked at earlier. She talked about projective identification is motivated by self uh, the self's need to eliminate unwanted or dangerous aspects of the self. So something one may not want or like about themselves, they may project outward. Then she talked about splitting, keeping apart two contradictory states such as love and anger. Uh, then uh, leads to an identification by projection, that is the object becomes an extension of the self. So we have very uh, uh, conflicting kinds of feelings, in a sense, love and anger, which I think we've all experienced this sort of ambivalence at some points in our life around a whole range of different ideas. And then she suggested that abused children were unable to detach from the abusive parent and perceive well-meaning caregivers as possibly dangerous. So this gets into later discussions uh, from others as well around issues what we construe as boundaries, our own personal boundaries and the boundaries of others, and how sometimes we violate boundaries based on what our experiences were uh, growing up. And as she suggests here, if one has had an abusive experience, they may consider all caregivers as potentially dangerous, which makes a lot of sense in terms of a logical thinking process. Uh, Ronald Fairbairn was uh, another one of the uh, theorists in this area. Um, he talked about internal objects as reflections of real experiences with people and not fantasies. So what one really experienced in their own perception of reality is uh, that inner kind of object that they deal with as opposed to fantasy and suggested the importance of recognizing child experiences of shame through relationships with a bad object. A bad object could be a very uh, punitive parent figure as an example and having been shamed by them in order to be put in one's place or to make one behave in a particular way. And then he used this term introjection as well and self-blame where we turn this kind of thing inward onto ourselves. And then the discussion of trauma bonding which he discussed and I'm going to try to find a, a clip of uh, Dr. Fairbairn discussing the trauma bonding issue to upload. Then there's Harry Guntrip, another one of uh, um, Ronald's contemporaries. Uh, he elaborated on uh, Fairbairn's idea and focused on the importance of the object in ego development. Again, uh, individuals may sometimes fear positive relationships fearing they will somehow be smothered by good experience, thus losing oneself in the process. So that's a real concern a lot of people may have. I don't remember it myself uh, in my own growth pattern, but we will encounter people, if we haven't, who may have similar experiences in their uh, developmental process. Then Donald Winnicott talked about mother-child relationships the mother's caring function considered to be the most significant determinant of psychological health. You know, and we will, look, we will be looking at the attachment issues uh, in, in the next video, but certainly a key 
um, caregiver in our lives is our mothers and how they relate to us has long-term implications in terms of our relating with others. The good enough mother is able to give an infant a sound start in ego development, providing good, as they say, ego coverage as one begins to develop. Again, as you see, this is very linked to psychoanalysis and psychodynamic theory and is indeed a part of that. Then Henry Stack Sullivan uh, further uh, developed ideas around these concepts. Uh, he introduced an interpersonal theory of human development that emphasized the important theoretical shift from what they used to call drive theory, which was a, a Freudian kind of uh, uh, concept that we looked at earlier. These whole drives, what, you know, is it pleasure that drives us or is it something else? And the therapist has a role in the patient's transferent distortions, and these are not solely determined by the patient's childhood experiences. So a lot of times, as the therapist, you may represent an authority figure, as they say in um, South Park, an authority. And uh, that would uh, perhaps be um, uh, setting up a negative uh, exchange. Uh, and sometimes it, this is transference is a challenging uh, area to, to work in if you have clients who have severe reactions. Um, I know working in a jail once, I had a client who was uh, delusional, thinking that I was the officer who had shot his brother, apparently, when he was younger. And so he had a tremendous reaction to me, which uh, you know, transferring the horrible experience onto what he thought was the officer who he was encountering again, somewhat related to this idea. But mostly the transference has to do with caregivers. Uh, actually, that's what it's about in terms of our childhood and how we were treated. And then the patients avoid certain clinical material in an attempt to preserve self-esteem. So if you're trying to work in an area where they were shamed, there may be some resistance to this and an avoidance of re-experiencing the trauma that one may have had in an earlier time. So there are eight stages in object relations theory and practice that we will overview here. Uh, preliminary diagnosis of relational pattern, building the therapeutic alliance, identifying the maladaptive relational pattern, Patient expresses maladaptive patterns. Therapist generates an empathic confrontation with the client. Working with the confrontation, generalizing the therapeutic relationship and separation and termination. Again, you see at the end of therapy, the separation and termination can be a, a bit of a challenge as well because it can resurface uh, the experiences that people had had with their caregivers at an earlier time in life. Object relations theory um, and brief theory, uh, time-limited dynamic psychotherapy, which fits into sort of a managed care approach. Basically, the focus is on maladaptive relational problems learned in the past, maintained in the present, and could potentially reenact in the therapeutic relationship. Um, uses a relationship between therapist and patient to discuss and change ways in which the patient interacts. So this is kind of the focus of this type of psychotherapy, which is somewhat brief and time, um, uh, time limited. Um, certainly a different approach than psychoanalysis, which can go on for several years on a regular weekly basis, even perhaps for a number of people who've encountered and engaged in that in the past. This is a quick overview of object relations and I will uh, on the module site try to upload a few uh, videos, uh, brief videos that will give you a clearer picture of um, uh, people who practice this uh, therapeutic approach.